Hello again. And today we're going to talk about uh, a book that was um, the first book of its kind. And it's this one, The Elite. The story of the Rhodesian Special Air Service. It was written by Barbara Cole, who was a South African journalist married to an officer from the SAS. And it was published in 1984 after the Rhodesian um, War had ended. So um, it, it's very much a history book ra rather than a current one, although the, there was an overlap. Um, the book covers the uh, origins of the Rhodesian SAS, which was C Squadron of 22 SAS, uh, and they were formed in Rhodesia and sent out to Malaya. And they took part in the campaign there. And then um, sometime later um, in Rhodesia, there was a need for um, a, a specialised unit. And they resurrected the SAS. And a group of uh, an officer and some NCOs was sent to Hereford, trained with 22 uh, excised with them in Denmark and um, formed the nucleus of uh, a squadron back in um, Rhodesia. So uh, this was C Squadron was reformed. Um, mm. And they very much uh, did it on the SAS model uh, with, with the um, different activities, uh, mobility in Sable and Rovers, uh, parachuting and so on. And, and the, the parachuting was interesting because it had been thought that um, Rhodesia was not a suitable country for parachuting because of its altitude. However, they started it and like in the UK, the parachute training was um, in the hands of the Air Force, and uh, which was the Royal Rhodesian Air Force at the time. And uh, they started training the guys and uh, as... Um, the, war, the time progressed, parachuting, both static line and free fall became a very major um, part of, of the, the operations. Uh, the other thing they did was um, start a selection course, which was held in, in Yanga, the mountainous area, uh, very, very rigorous. So uh, the book covers uh, some of the early operations uh, and some of the personalities, um, for example, uh, one of the early um, commanding officers was a, a, a chap called Dudley Coventry. And he was a fascinating character. He served in World War II, uh, took part in D-Day, served with uh, 4-5 Commander Royal Marines. He, uh, the history of, the, uh, of that unit um, points out that... Uh, he once killed uh, an SS soldier with a punch to the jaw. So he, he was a, a real fighter. He, he joined um, uh, 22 SAS in Malaya, uh, the British SAS, and uh, served there. And then uh, back in the UK, he um, was in line for a desk job. So he uh, went and joined the Foreign Legion. Uh, he came back from there, went back to uh, 22, then um, went to Rhodesia and ended up running um, their SAS. And um, one of the things that they did was they formed a little carder called um, the Secret Seven. And they were um, the arm of the uh, Rhodesian intelligence and they used to do um, clandestine operations. And on one such operation... Um, a device they were carrying detonated and um, uh, most of the guys were killed and Coventry had bent down to tie his, his bootlaces and he was just um, blasted, uh, you know, his ears were ringing and everything. And there was a, uh, not too far away, there was an RLI patrol who heard it and the RLI um, uh, senior NGO came up and here's this this officer who's just been blown and uh, he was greeted by Dudley Coventry with uh, hello sergeant major uh, how are you and 
uh, he um, had a fantastic career. And one of the guys in um, in in the Rhodesian SS told me that even after reti he retired at a very very advanced age, Coventry would join in the selection runs with the, with the young um, uh, candidates. He was a real demon. And then uh, after independence, he was asked to join the reconstituted special forces in um, in uh, Zimbabwe. And he actually led a parachute assault on the Gorongosa mountain in, in his 70s. Um, absolute demon. He, and he was later murdered in, in some sort of skullduggery suspected there. So... Um, Another um, major character in the book is Brian Robinson, who was the commanding officer um, throughout most of the Bush War conflict and who uh, really left his mark on the uh, SAS there. Uh, he, he was something of a Marmite character. People either loved him or hated him, but it, it, he certainly um, r really, most of them acknowledged the very important work he did uh, in moulding the unit. So um, a companion to the elite was brought out uh, not too long after, and it's this one, the Elite Pictorial, which fleshes out the original book, which does have quite a few photographs, including colour photos, but this one is very, very heavily illustrated. It's again by Barbara Cole, um, chock full of pictures, and... Um, it's, it serves really a, as a great update. And in it, there's um, a quote by Brian Robinson. Now, the Minister of Defence, P.K. van der Beel, um, was making a trip to one of the um, bush camps, which was um, uh, run by both the RLI and the SAS. And the convention was that the minister would wear insignia from the unit he was visiting. And he mused to Brian Robinson. He says um, that, that, that um, he didn't know whether to wear an RLI stable belt and uh, SAS wings. And Robinson said to him, I don't know about the RLI stable belt minister, but you won't be wearing SAS wings. So he was quite a forthright and prickly character. Um, this book covers some stuff that wasn't in the earlier book. And it's, it's this chapter on funnies where they set up um, a section to look at urban operations and cooperating with the security and intelligence people. So they were doing things like lock picking, telephone tapping, um, bodyguarding, um, room combat, this kind of kind of stuff. And, and they had a chap who'd recently served with 22 SAS um, uh, helping them with that. Uh, both books, uh, they complement each other. They're really, really good. They give a, a great overview. Um, there was a very close connection between uh, Rhodesia and the UK units. Um, back in the 60s, they did a, a squadron exercise together in Aden. And I once had the, the pleasure of, of um, having a brew with um, two chaps who'd served in each. So there's a chap from A Squadron 22 and a chap from C Squadron Rhodesia. And they'd both been on the exercise and they were reminiscing about it and some of the characters. Um, the books uh, were written at a time when a lot of the material was still very sensitive. So some of the names have been changed and a lot, some of the faces have been blacked out. And some of this was because uh, the guys from Special Forces in um, Rhodesia had gone down to South Africa and were operating with their Special Forces. So it was, it was still... Uh, a need for a level of anonymity. And some of the operations weren't discussed in full detail. But some later books we'll be looking at will go into it uh, more deeply. But they were the first books on 
the Rhodesian SAS and there's still um, delightful reads um, both really really demonstrate the um, the team spirit and the um, it was almost the, the way it was in the UK when we were facing invasion 1940 where everyone got together that's what Rhodesia was like particularly with the military um, the SAS was was revered by the general population um, their remit was mainly ex external operations uh, they w just to go back when when they were originally para trained they later on developed the idea of the fire force which was then taken up by the RLI and the RAR and so on but uh, it was originally an SAS task but they uh, quickly um, changed the focus into external operations into um, Zambia, Mozambique, Botswana and so on. So um, the book covers all of it and um, it's, uh, it's, <clears throat> it's still available but it's pretty high price, particularly um, the, the first book, The Elite. Um, but if you can get your hands on it, I'm, I'm sure you enjoy.